So I thought before I paint today, I'll bring you up here to the Bluebell Woods behind our house to talk about light and shade. When you're painting, you're looking for the different tones and depths of colour. The other reason I thought I'd bring you up here today is because it's spectacularly beautiful at the moment. I mean, look at that. When you're walking in these woods, you've got to be really careful not to tread on the bluebells. These bluebells have been here for hundreds and hundreds of years. So if I was to paint this scene, I'd look at the contrasts. Look at the colour of the undergrowth and the sunshine and the undergrowth in the shade. Look at where the trees are facing the light and where the trees are in shadow. If you paint what you see instead of what you know, your painting is far more convincing to the viewer. Our brains override what we see. Our brains fill in the gaps. If we can reverse that process or disconnect from our brain and just paint what we see, we'll have a very different painting. If I want to check that I'm painting what I see and not what I know, then I have a mirror in the studio and I repeatedly turn my painting around and look at it reflected in the mirror. Because then your brain is disconnected. You just see patterns. Sometimes I even turn the painting upside down and look at it reflected in the mirror. Then your brain is truly scrambled. Then you're very quickly seeing errors. You see what you need to mend. You see what you've assumed. It's a bit like drawing a bicycle. We all think we can draw a bicycle. We think we know how it works. But once you start drawing one, you realize you've no idea. Your brain's made it up. Try it yourself. Draw a bicycle from memory and then have a look at a picture and draw one again. Here's the same bluebells close up with a scattering of wild geranium which we find in the hedgerows here. They're so pretty. I've collected the seeds of these and I'm hoping to put them in our garden. When you paint something it's a delight to see it close up, see how it's made, see how each individual spray of flowers is created. Now here we are back at the house. Um, on the way back, I collected a couple of leaves and some sweet nettles. Did you know that very few nettles sting you? That um, you can tell whether a nettle's going to sting you by whether it has flowers or not. If it has flowers, then it doesn't sting you. Also, a trick to play with uh, small children works very well. Nettles only sting you from the underside. So you can stroke nettle leaves on the top and they won't sting. Makes you look very brave. Um, so, anyway, back to the house, collected some leaves and some nettles. Uh, luckily we've got bluebells in our garden, but as you can see, they don't last very long. So, to prepare for any painting, uh, the first thing I do is make a sketch. Uh, when you sketch something, you have to break it down into its individual parts, understand how it works. So that's what I'm doing here. Usually I would be sketching in pencil, but it really doesn't matter. Uh, so I've just used a biro here so that you can see what I'm doing more clearly. This is the arrangement that 
um, I'll be painting. You can also paint if you like. Um, I've chosen it because it's got some beautiful flowers in it, but also because it's got a very limited colour range. Um, these are the colours I'm going to choose to paint with. This is sap green and ultraviolet. I will be adding a tiny bit of yellow to show where the light is shining through some of the leaves. But um, this is my first sketch of a single bluebell flower stem to make sure I know what I'm doing and to create a bit of muscle memory so that when I paint the bluebells themselves in the bigger painting, um, I'm not learning for the first time. I can start experimenting with light and colour rather than being concerned about the details of each flower. So here we are, I've started with the vase. If you start with uh, the structure, then you give your painting good foundations. Um, because I've already been sketching the bluebells previously, I didn't need to draw this out in pencil. I've drawn a couple of pencil lines just to make sure I know where I'm going with the picture. Um, but apart from that, the whole thing's freehand. And as you'll see from the plate, I've only got there indigo and green. There is a little bit of yellow. If I want to make darker greens, then I just add the indigo. Um, that creates a lovely deep rich green. If I want to go lighter, then I add white. But that basically it, there's no other colours. Which makes the whole thing extremely simple as far as colour mixing is concerned. You can't really go wrong if you're only using three colours. So, I'll leave you to watch me painting, first of all, the structure of this painting, and then there's a freeze frame of me painting all the leaves. Um, beautiful nettle leaves where you've got the sun shining through, they're backlit, and that's where I've used the yellow. And then where the leaves are directly in the sun, where they're being hit by the sun, then they're white. Um, you'll see in the corner of this shot, uh, the leaf that's turned upwards, the reverse of that leaf is being hit by the light. And you could paint that underside of that leaf with white if you wanted to. So here's a freeze frame of me painting a lot of the leaves. And then in a minute or so, when we get to the flowers themselves, um, I'll talk about colour mixing. These bluebells are a delight to paint because they are such a deep, rich, pure hue of ultraviolet. The hue is the original colour, red, green, yellow. And then as soon as you add white or black to it, it becomes a tone. As I paint these flowers, I don't use the hue straight from the tube. I mix it with white or I mix it with green or I mix it with water if I want it to be more transparent or, or just a lighter shade. Uh, what's lovely when you paint with flowers is that, or leaves is that you cannot quite mix the colours together. So as they leave your brush, they create a striped effect. As the colours leave your brush, they keep mixing and they better reflect the huge variation and variety of colours that you'll find in nature. I've almost finished my painting here. To make the flowers and the leaves more three-dimensional, I'll be adding some lighter tones at the front of the flowers and some darker tones at the back. If you're painting like this, using different hues and tones, you, it's useful to identify your light source. Uh, in this case, it was very easy. I have lovely great big windows. And as you can see at the top of the screen, when you look at the bluebells, the light hits the bluebells from the right and they are darker on the left. So each of these bluebells, every single one of them, I will put a stripe or a tint of lighter colours on the front of the bluebell and darker hues at the back.
Now just to finish off, I'll paint dark under the vase so that the vase is grounded, so that the whole display is not floating in the air. And then I think that's pretty much finished.